Welcome to the channel, I'm Amedeo602, and today we're going to talk about how to optimize your Ryzen processor for playing Warzone. This is a very broad guide, we're going to cover lots of things here. Because this is a very broad guide, I'm not going to go super in-depth on any topic here, but if you do have questions about anything and you want to cover it in more detail, please check the description below where you'll find links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Discord. Of course, you can also just leave a comment on this video, I do try to reply to most of those, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. First, we're going to talk about why you care about optimizing your Ryzen processor for Warzone, how to check your system to see if you need to worry about any of this at all. After that, we're going to talk about your system RAM, because you can't really talk about Ryzen performance without talking about RAM. There will be a brief section on Windows-specific settings. Then I'm going to cover Warzone-specific settings. Then we're going to jump into the BIOS. I'm going to show you several different settings that I want you to try on your machine. Why do you care about optimizing your Ryzen CPU for Warzone? Well, the answer to this is simple. You want more frames and more consistent frames while you're playing Warzone. I've got a few different videos on the channel here talking about Warzone performance, and almost everyone who contacts me in the comments or Twitter, Twitch, Discord, whatever, almost everyone has the same limitation, and that is CPU performance. I have a video on the channel telling you how to find whether your bottleneck is the GPU or the CPU. I'd recommend checking out that video if you want more information about this. In summary, that video just tells you you need to enable your GPU time and CPU time overlays. One thing I left out of that video, I really wish I'd been more clear about this, you need to turn on those overlays and then enter a game. If you're just sitting in the menus or if you go into Warzone orientation, that's not going to be a 100% indicator of your performance. The only way to get that is to drop into a game. So please, 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 if I ask you for GPU time and CPU time, let me know what they are in the game, not in the menu. Once you have both of those enabled and you're in a game, whichever one is higher is your bottleneck. If your GPU time is significantly higher than your CPU time, then I'd look into overclocking your GPU. I've got a video on the channel about that, and that video would probably give you more performance than this one. But if you're like most of us and your CPU time is higher than your GPU time, then you've come to the right place because this video is going to help you fix that. But after you've made a change, how do you know whether something is better or worse? Well, you have to run a benchmark. Unfortunately, Warzone has no good way to run benchmarks. I used to use Warzone orientation for all my benchmark testing, but it turns out that the CPU usage in that mode is a lot lower than you get in Rebirth or Verdansk, and so I no longer recommend that method. I do have two different utilities that I have used for benchmarking in Warzone. The first tool is called RTSS, or Riva Tuner Statistics Server. This tool is included in the MSI Afterburner Suite, and it gives you a very nice on-screen display, as well as access to a log file. You can then import that log file into a spreadsheet of your choice, something like Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, and run your analysis there. Unfortunately, when Season 5 came out, RTSS overlay stopped working. So now I have another program that I recommend called CapFrame X. The setup for CapFrame X is a lot easier than RTSS. All you need to do is start it up, start up Warzone, and then press whatever your capture key is bound to. Before pressing the capture button, you want to be standing in the same spot before and after each test and just hold in the W key to run forward. Strictly speaking, you don't have to run this test every time you make a change, but running this test will give you the most accurate results possible. And the reason you want the most accurate results possible is because FPS is not very stable in Warzone, especially on CPU-bound systems. So if you're just running around in Warzone and you look up at the FPS counter every once in a while, that's not going to give you a really good indication of whether a change has helped your FPS. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can't really talk about Ryzen processors without talking about RAM. I went into quite a bit of detail in this in the RAM testing guide, and based on that guide, I recommend that most people use 3600 MHz RAM at a cast latency of 16 or lower. Without going into a ton of details, faster memory helps your Ryzen CPU perform better, and when your Ryzen CPU is performing better, you're going to get your frame times lower, which brings your FPS higher. In other words, if you have really slow RAM, buying faster RAM is the easiest way to get more performance out of your existing processor. Speaking of RAM, 16GB is the minimum I personally recommend for Warzone, but I have heard some rumors that having 4 sticks of 8GB RAM for a total of 32GB does improve your FPS. I have not personally tried having 4 sticks of 8GB RAM, but if you have tried it, please let me know in the comments below whether it improved your FPS. Let's talk about some Windows-specific settings. Keep in mind that some of these settings may not help your system. On your individual machine, if these settings don't help, feel free to use whatever works best for you. First thing I want you to do is right click on your desktop, go to display settings. Under here, we're going to scroll down to graphic settings. 
and you want to enable this hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. And then down here, you're going to browse and select modernwarfare.exe for Warzone. Click on that, go to options, make sure that that's set to high performance mode. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and click on the Windows key and we're going to go to choose a power plan. You wanna make sure that the high performance power plan is selected. Next, click on the Windows key again and start typing in game mode. When you do that, you're going to see game mode here. You want that to be turned on. Then click on Xbox Game Bar and make sure Xbox Game Bar is turned off. Again, game mode on, game bar off. Next, we're gonna click on the Windows key once again and we're going to start typing in background apps. Make sure that background apps are disabled. This is going to free your CPU up just for Warzone and not be running any of this other stuff in the background. Finally, we're going to open up Task Manager and check your startup applications. Anything that's in here needs to be absolutely essential to your computer. If not, you're just wasting resources. So you can see things like Steam I have installed, but it is not enabled on startup. If you want to toggle any of these things, you just need to right click and select either enable or disable. Now it's time to cover some Warzone specific settings to help you get the most out of your processor. Before even starting the game, you should have a look at advoptions.ini. This file is located in your Documents folder under Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Players, and then your player name. In here, there's a setting called Renderer Worker Count. I have my recommended values for several different Ryzen processors on the screen right now for what to set to your Renderer Worker Count. This value does change over time, and I do have some videos on the channel with different recommendations, but as of right now, in the middle of Season 5, this is what I recommend. Once you update your Renderer Worker Count, go ahead and save and close the file, and then start up the game. Inside the game, there are very few settings that actually improve your performance based on your CPU. Most of these are going to be GPU specific. I've got a video on the channel explaining every single setting in detail. But for a really quick rundown, I recommend full screen mode, not full screen borderless. I recommend you disable ray tracing, ambient occlusion, SSR, most of the options set to either low or disabled. I do like at least 1x anti-aliasing, and I do not like DLSS at all for playing on 1440p or lower, so I always have that disabled. Let's move on to the BIOS. If you are not comfortable changing settings in your computer BIOS, you're not alone, and my friends over at Sense Quality can help you. They're happy to overclock your CPU, overclock your GPU. You can use coupon code AMEDIO602 to save money off of any of their optimization services. But if you are the adventurous type and you want to change the BIOS, the very first thing to check is that you have XMP or DOCP enabled for your RAM. I also recommend disabling the global C state control and disabling CPPC and CPPC preferred cores. If you're going to overclock your CPU, there are a couple of different ways to do that in the BIOS. You can use what's called PBO or precision boost overdrive, or you can do a manual all core overclock. If you're using Precision Boost Overdrive, you need to go enable the setting, and then you can also optionally apply an override. The proper value to put in here for your override is gonna depend heavily on what kind of cooling you have, what kind of processor you have. The highest value you can put in is 200, and on my 5600X that is liquid cooled, I can run plus 200 megahertz, no problem. For the Ryzen 5000 series processors, you can also go into Curve Optimizer, and you can set this to negative, and the largest negative value you can have is negative 30. Lots of people report that this is not stable for their system, so please use care when setting this. If you're using PBO, you're pretty much good to go at this point. If you want a manual all-core overclock, just change your multiplier. This is another one of those where I can't tell you which number to put in. It's going to be different from computer to computer. Part of that's luck, part of that's cooling. For my 5600X processor, I can use a multiplier of 48, and it's perfectly stable in Warzone as far as I can tell, but as soon as I run a proper benchmark like Prime95, I see crashes. And I have dropped into the BIOS for you. We are going to run through my BIOS real quick. I'm going to show you how to enable DOCP, I'm going to show you how to do a PBO, and we're also going to do a manual all-core overclock. I've got the X570 chipset. Uh, as you can see on the board here, I've got an Asus Tough Gaming X570 plus Wi-Fi, that's my motherboard. Your BIOS is probably gonna be a little bit different. And for that, I'm gonna recommend you find some other video on YouTube to help you walk through your BIOS. Very first thing to notice here is DOCP is set to profile one. 
If I disable this, then my RAM is running slower than the advertised speed, so we don't wanna do that. All I need to do is click on profile one, boom, everything's good. On my motherboard, I can also press F7 to go into advanced mode. When you go into advanced mode, your menu is gonna look a little bit different. We're gonna walk through everything you need to know right here. First of all, if you go to AI tweaker, right down here, you can see CPU core ratio. Core VID is where you set your voltage. For a 5600X, I wouldn't go above 1.325 as the voltage. Of course, if you're a little more adventurous, a little bigger of a risk taker than me, you can set this to whatever you want. Just don't supply so much voltage that you overheat your CPU and damage it. That can shorten the lifespan of your CPU if your temperatures are too high, things like that. Uh, by the way, this is not an overclocking guide. This is just showing you the real basics of how to get into the settings. I'd recommend doing your own research on overclocking, what's best for your processor, what's best for your motherboard, things like that. But right here, you can see this is my ratio. If I wanna run all 12 of my cores at 4.8 gigahertz, I just put in a 48 right here. But if I wanted this to be uh, 4.7 gigahertz, I would just type in 47 right here. So 47, 48, that's about the most you can expect out of a 5600X. If I try to go any higher than this, the system just won't boot at all. For now, I'm just gonna put both of these back to auto, just simply by typing in the word auto, and that's going to disable the all core overclock. Next, we're gonna look at how to set up PBO properly. For that, we can either go to Precision Boost Overdrive in here, or what I prefer to do is go over to the Advanced tab under AMD Overclocking. There's a Precision Boost Overdrive section in here with some more options. And in here, we're just going to set PBO to Advanced. And in here, you can change your PBO limits. Uh, we're not gonna get into that today. All we're going to do here is we're going to change this override value here to 200 megahertz. Uh, keep in mind this may not be stable for your PC depending mostly on temperature but on a few other factors. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and set this one to 200 because I know that's stable for me. And if you've got the Ryzen 5600X or above processor, you can go into Curve Optimizer. Uh, you can do this per core of course, but that's just more time, more testing uh, for all cores. And this is gonna undervolt your CPU. Basically what this is gonna do is supply less power to your CPU than the factory spec. This can cause system instability, so be really careful with this one. I am able to run pretty stable on my machine with a negative 30. That's the option that I said most people, most people cannot run with a negative 30. I guess I just got really lucky. In the advanced menu, if we go into AMD CBS, in this menu you can turn off the global C state control right here. And if you scroll all the way down here, you can see NBIO common options. And this is a big performance optimization tip for Ryzen processors. Under SMU common options, come in here and CPPC and CPPC preferred cores. I'd like you to try disabling both of those. Those gave me a pretty good boost. If you're watching this video, there's a really good chance you're trying to improve performance on Warzone on your PC. If you wanna learn how to improve your PC's performance on your GPU, your CPU, or your RAM, be sure to check out the other videos on the screen right now. And if you haven't yet, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button on this video. And as always, thank you very much for watching.